good morning. The Center for Policy Studies is glad to welcome you, ladies and gentlemen, to today's discussion. It's yet another seminar within the Advancing Reforms in Armenia with Visegrad Falls Know-How program supported by the International Visegrad Fund. And today we are covering the civilian security sector reform, one of our program topics. And uh, on which we are going to publish the policy paper with recommendations in a few weeks. And uh, today's presentation will be by Wojciech Lorenz, expert from the Polish Institute of International Affairs. We are very glad to have such a distinguished expert today with us. And the discussant will be Artnaszes Halatian, uh, advisor to the Prime Minister of Armenia and uh, a lecturer at the Police Academy. And he also has some other engagements in policy analysis. And uh, so without further delay, I would like to invite our expert, Mr. Lawrence, to start the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for the invitation. And uh, I am glad that uh, hopefully I will be able uh, to, to contribute to the reform uh, in Armenia. Uh, and um, as the host was uh, kind to, to introduce me, I am I, I'm an expert of the Polish Institute of International Affairs, uh, focused mainly on international security, uh, but I also uh, have some uh, insight of the reforms uh, of uh, security sector in in Poland. I'm old enough to uh, to follow it. Uh, uh, so, um, um, especially from the you know political uh, political angle, uh, it, it's been a heated debate for three decades in in Poland, and it still is. Uh, so. It, it clearly demonstrates how, first of all, important security sector is, and uh, on the other hand, how, how difficult the reforms can be, especially in, in the context as we have uh, in Poland. Um, so uh, let's start me with some general observations that you pro definitely already know, but uh, they prepare the, the ground for uh, for further uh, presentation of the Polish case. So, uh, of course, the security sector lies at the, at the heart of, of conflict prevention, peace building and, and development and uh, good governance, human rights, civil society, state building. Uh, it is important for, for the states aspiring to, to be democracies. It is a never ending process, actually. You, you, you can be a and a democratic state, but uh, but there are different different levels of, of the state of uh, democracy actually. So this is a never ending, never ending fight for 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 keeping uh, a proper level of um, of democracy in a state, and uh, it is important in such states to have efficient management of of resources, uh, stable long term uh, development. And it all requires a capable, uh, efficient security services. Of course, you need to have a military that is well adjusted to, to possible threats. A uh, military provides you with a sense of, of security, which is fundamental for a stable political system and long term e economic development. Of course, you need military security services, which will help keep your military safe from immune is immune from inside um, to inside and outside threats. Mm, and uh, then there is uh, civilian sector, civilian security institutions, police, border guard, internal security services, which deal with intelligence and counterintelligence and some other institutions. Um, and in democratic states, these institutions and structures should serve a state and its citizens. They are not to serve political parties, obviously. Uh, independent professional services are necessary for the citizens to, to have trust towards the state. And, and the tr trust is foundation uh, of political and consequently economic stability. 
so the most challenging part is to ensure effective democratic control for security institutions. This control has to be provided by the politicians, and, and this is the tricky part, because uh, um, since in the democracy, political control, the, the control of, of the society, of uh, citizens over the state, over the institutions is, is provided through the political structures, through politicians. So obviously, mm, this can be a problem because they, they can try to influence those institutions, they can try to use those institutions for their political purposes. So um, this, this really needs to be uh, well um, solved, um, this, uh, this, this problem. The second crucial challenge is how to place security services in the state structure, which is somehow connected to, to this first problem, how to provide a, an efficient and independent political control. Uh, there can be, uh, this is obvious for, for, for all the people who, who live long enough that uh, there can be a competition even, even among politicians from the same party, let alone a multi-party coalition. Sometimes different institutions are used for the party benefit and they do not cooperate for, for greater common good. So the system needs to take it under, uh, under account. There should be on one hand, a centralized system of control with parliamentary oversight. If we need a centralized control, we may put the services under the control of the prime minister. Sometimes um, it is enough that they are controlled by minister of uh, respective uh, governments, usually minister of interior and uh, or minister of, uh, of defense. Mm. And of course, to have a proper system, you need a proper, a clear, legal um, framework. Uh, it will define the responsibilities and competences of, of the services. Uh, you need to um, have your bills in order so that one bill is not contrary uh, to another, the decision makers will not make the decisions if they don't have something on, on the paper that something is in their responsibility. It is, it is pretty clear how it works. But from my experience, I can also see that uh, if you have shared competences and they are not clearly defined, so the decision makers will also try not to make the decision because they will tell that this is the competence responsibility of, of somebody else. But if the competence is really important and, and can, can bring some political gains, political benefit. So again, when there is a shared competence and it is not clearly defined how to, how to share it, how to coordinate work, very often politicians can also try to pull um, and say that this is their responsibility, the responsibility of this particular service, uh, which should deal with those problems because this is, uh, this is beneficial for them. So, so this is how, how it is important. Sometimes those competences are, it is crucial that they overlap, but then you need, uh, you need to have uh, uh, some certain solutions uh, procedures to to make to make it work, and of course we we also need to have people who have the motivation to um, to to work in the security institutions. They have a clear career path uh, and um, training, necessary training, so they they can be competent employees of uh, security services. So I will try to describe how the security sector reform looked in, uh, in Poland. So we will have the, the point of uh, reference. It will be easier to understand why security sector is a fundamental pillar uh, of the state and uh, why it is actually impossible to build an effective independent security services without a well-planned reform. So first I would like briefly to give you the broader context of um, what 
Poland, in, in what situation Poland found itself at the beginning of the of the 90s. Obviously, after the Second World War, uh, we found ourselves um, as an independent uh, state, but behind the Iron Curtain under a heavy influence of uh, of uh, Russia, mm, of course, there were some uh, some people. Uh, there was a communist party uh, that supported um, uh, supported the, the new uh, idea of um, social political framework for Poland. But it was a minority, and actually, without the military pressure, the military presence on the territory of Poland and pressure from Moscow, influence through the communist uh, parties from, from Moscow, it would be impossible to impose to impose the socialist or as we sometimes call it communist system in, in Poland after the war, the, the elections were rigged. And during the rigged elections, there was the decision that we will um, build a new, uh, a new state uh, so it was based on a one-party system uh, with military as a separate center of, uh, of power. Uh, what is important is that under the Yalta and Potsdam agreements, Polish borders were moved to, to the east, uh, to the west. Um, eastern borders were, were moved to the west and uh, some of the um, former German territory was um, included in, in, into Poland. So the whole country was as if moved to, to the West. Uh, and uh, together with the division of Germany, it contributed to the sense of insecurity of, uh, of the communist regime. It was afraid that, that Germany will try to use military power to enforce reunification, but also to, to reclaim the territory, which under the post-World War II agreements became a part of Poland. So security policy was heavily militarized military power was to defend the state against external threats but it was also a pillar of internal stability because it it served as a platform for political indoctrination it was preferred to defend the rule of of polish united workers party it also checked controlled the the, the united workers uh, party you know whether it um, it was not trying to to reform itself too too much a military was used against citizens who asked for more political freedoms or just better economic conditions. In 1970, military was called to the streets in Gdańsk, a main city uh, at the seaside, uh, with shipyard industry to put down the demonstrations of the workers, um, and they shot a number of people. And of course, civilian security structures were also prepared to defend the uh, undemocratic one-party system. Ministry of Interior and Security Services, such as People's Militia, Militia Obywatelska, had a double role on one. Uh, one was to provide security uh, against uh, ordinary crime, and another one to defend the political system through the surveillance of the opposition and the system of repression. The Ministry of the Interior had special departments for fight with the opposition and with the church. It was responsible for uh, national police, Polish border guard, uh, the civil defense. And the militia had a special department called motorized units of uh, people's militia, ZOMO, which were armed with anti a riot gear and trained to pacify demonstrations and they were really brutal and, and were used against workers during strikes or demonstrations um, together with military. So security apparatus relied and so security system that the, the, the state system relied heavily on uh, on those security services and both services of course uh, relied heavily on the vast network of informants um, who collaborated with those uh, institutions and then we we had the collapse of the communism in 1989 poland decided to change the political and economic system i will make this uh, long story short because you you are well, well aware of it uh, but uh, this historical background is important because it weighs heavily on how what was possible, how we reformed our 
our security structures. Uh, so when in 1989 we had the partially free uh, elections and we started to build a new a new country um, obviously there was the need for a political reform that required uh, the reform of political military civilian and administrative structures and it required an extensive reform of security sector which will serve the state and the citizens not not the governing political parties and security structures Mm, this is the, the, the opening moment for our reforms, that we, we, we begin the, the reforms with a really bad image of security structures in the society. There was no, no trust towards uh, the services, former opposition leaders, all of a sudden uh, became ministers responsible for the reforms. They had to reform the institutions that very often persecuted them and their families, uh, but they had to do it with very limited resources and in a very, very contested political environment. Because, of course, this is not a simple story that, you know, there was the decision that we will change the system from the communism one party system into a new one. And, you know, everyone, everybody accepted one, one, one vision of the state. Of course, there were different ideas, different concepts dozens of political parties with with different uh, different ideas it was it was a really contested political uh, environment and um, another important thing that happened that with the change of political and economic system when you know all opportunities appeared and um, there came a significant increase in crime between 1989 and 1990 during one year a number of criminal cases in poland increased by 350,000. that is by more than 60 percent and the number of the most serious crimes the homicides increased by 30 percent so you would you would say that there was the collapse actually of uh, of the state's structures it's it was as if the state was unable to to control what is what is going on in, in its border of course you know we we have the perspective it was not the somalia it was not a failed state but the scale of increase especially for um Artashes who who deals with uh, police reforms as i understand um, it is it is pretty clear clear that the increase in uh, in crime in, by 60 percent is um is a shocking uh, shocking and it is it is just like physically felt by um by the society i i, I really remember uh, how it looked at the beginning of the 90s that all of all of a sudden within a couple of years you you started started to feel insecure um you heard that you know somebody bought a car but the car was stolen that somebody was uh, um uh, that there was a break into some friend's flat, et cetera, et cetera. You, you, you heard those stories on a daily or weekly, weekly basis. And uh, of course, some decisions uh, also were made which did not help, uh, and they uh, exacerbated the problem, actually, such as general amnesty of 1989. Now, now from a historical perspective, we would say that it was just like a crazy idea. You, you have the state structures that are not adjusted to such huge challenge such changes and you you just introduce the the amnesty but this was this was the context this was the political context you just you know the decision makers wanted to demonstrate that we we are cutting off the past we are beginning a new chapter in our history and amnesty was also was crucial because you also had some uh, political maybe maybe not even political prisoners at that time but um, people who were put into prison for some petty crimes and um, which represented the repressiveness of the former system and now the decision makers wanted to to, to build a new more lenient and more liberal state so for example to, to give you another perspective in 1989 some 
70% uh, of respondents claimed that they felt safe in Poland, while 22% only uh, said that the life was, was not safe. But in 1993, uh, these uh, numbers were reversed totally. So 67% claimed that they did not feel safe, while only 26% of respondents said that they felt safe. So the reforms included the changes um, but at the very beginning, the changes in the criminal code. Uh, initially, there have been a series of um, uh, modifications of criminal code and the major reform uh, of the criminal code in 1997. Uh, it was the same year when Poland approved a new constitution and uh, it introduced the uh, some institutions, some solutions that should help you know, fight the, the, the serious crime. For example, the institution of the crown witness who would make it easier to, to, to fight with the, the most serious crime. But at the same time, the law became more lenient. As I said, you know, the decision makers wanted to say that this is a new, not a repressive state. And uh, for example, the capital punishment was suspended and replaced with the life imprisonment, shorter sentences for different crimes were introduced, more liberal approach to juveniles was, was taken. And the problem was that the criminal code did not include a number of modern solutions, which were already introduced in uh, many states across the Western world. For example, there were no solutions which would enable effective confiscation of goods gathered during criminal activities. And this was a huge problem at the time of you know, those economic reforms, the, the era of opportunities, the, and the economic, the crimes in the economic space sphere was, was also uh, huge. The huge fortunes, fortunes were, were growing. Uh, so, so it seems that it was a, a, a basic tool that should be used, but somehow it was not uh, introduced. And there were no solutions which would enable protection of the rights of the victims at the early stage of the investigation, no electronic, uh, electronic monitoring of criminals. So some say that the criminal code was already outdated at the time when it was introduced in 1997. And until the mid 2000s, Polish criminal code actually became one of the most lenient in Europe. High profile cases uh, shaped the public, uh, public perception of security system. Uh, for example, in 1998, a chief inspector of the police, Marek Papawa, was murdered and the case has not been solved for many, many years. Uh, so um, general public had the impression that the police is incompetent com completely that even in such a uh, crucial case, it, it, it is unable to find who, who was responsible. Um, organized crime thrived. The symbol of the leniency towards gangsters uh, was the sentences of the members of the most violent organized crime groups, so-called Mafia Pruszkowska, uh, who after six years of trial were sentenced to from one year to eight years in prison was in 2012. And by 2000 years, the, the number of criminal cases in comparison to 1989 increased by 100%. So, so again, even uh, when we started the um, reforms in the 1990s, you could see that um, you know, the, the, the number of criminal cases is growing and people still do not feel safe and it was a very much political political issue and this increase of crime and diminished sense of security was reflected in, in, in generally negative public perception of uh, judiciary and prosecution office in 2005 60 percent of the public expressed negative view of the judiciary in 2005 a new conservative government started to introduce the reforms which included a more severe punishment for violent crimes and the number of criminal cases what is interesting started to drop it was just like in, in a laboratory you could see that you know after many years 
when people felt insecure and they had a negative negative perception of, of police and, and judiciary and prosecutor's office all of the sudden when there was a party with some conservative agenda and um, with the reforms and that you know some politicians started to play the game although it was impossible because we already joined european union in 2004 but some were saying that okay we should reintroduce capital punishment but if not definitely the, the the law should be more severe and there was just like you know a po political ground good political ground for it because people just just wanted to feel safe but what was really interesting that it it brought pretty quickly uh, some positive results uh, the introduction of the so-called uh, it was interesting uh, development they they introduced in 2006 uh, so-called 24-hour courts it was a major decision which improved significantly the speed of criminal proceedings on simple cases and contributed to the improvement of the perception of the judiciary system uh, but it was a short-lived reform the conservative government decided for early elections in 2007 and lost power and uh, uh, again um, to to give you the perspective how it can work how it, it, it can quickly work both both ways in in, in 2000, 2007 there were 36,000 cases which were dealt by those 24-hour courts but in 2008 there were only 8,000 cases so um, you know the, the the reform was no longer a priority there was no political pressure on the judiciary and the judiciary as as if lost the motivation for you know for hard effective effective work at least this this could be the perception of the of the general public and this is uh, why i'm i am saying this this is important because we we observe this uh, today when when this government uh, the, the 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 government that ruled from 2005 2007 returned to power in 2015 the reform of the judiciary uh, of, uh, was one of their of the slogans or was on their agenda <laughs> and they started very very deep and controversial reforms i will come back to it uh, to it later but it, it it just demonstrates that you know uh, for the last 10 15 years uh, there was a fertile political ground um, for the politicians to um, to be used and to, to, to use the the slogan of um, the reform of the judiciary as an important part of their political agenda which uh, which helped them win the election um, how the reforms of the security structures looked like i will present on the example of police and internal security services of course i will not discuss all the elements of of um, civilian security sectors we don't have time for this i will mention briefly if time permits military intelligence because politically civilian and military security services created a very similar organizational and and, and political problem but it, if only if we have uh, time for this. So starting with the police, even those people's militia, Militia Obywatelska, was separated from motorized units, which were mainly used for repression during the communist times, uh, it suffered a huge image problem as well. So the reforms of, uh, of the police were crucial, both for political and, and organizational uh, structural reasons. Poland needed new, effective, apolitical force which will focus on on fighting crime and not uh, not protecting uh, one party system. And in already in April 1990, Parliament approved a bill which disbanded the people's militia and established police, which was clearly separated from other state security services. And because of the negative historical experience um, the authors of the bill tried to to change the relation between the police 
uh, and the society. So it was supposed to be an institution which serves the public and responds to, to public needs. It needs to be able to operate on the lower, the lowest possible level. It stressed um, the bill from 1990 stressed uh, the obligation of the members of the police to respect the dignity of the citizens and human rights and members of the police uh, cannot be members of political parties of course a much bigger pressure was was put on on the prevention so there were different programs of uh, which uh, uh, tried to 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 demonstrate that police is not this force of repression this is the force of cooperation with the society which is very much focused on on prevention um, a number of campaigns directed towards the, the youngsters juveniles it was important at the very beginning to send a clear signal that it is a new structure um, of the independent state and there have been a number of uh, PR symbolic uh, moves uh, which were to demonstrate that this is this is a completely new force. One of them was the return to the ranks and insignia um, system from the period before the World War II. And uh, the reform of the uh, curriculum and methods of the edu education was, of course, introduced. And the new leadership tried to introduce the the reorganization to improve the efficiency. It fo focused on the clear division of responsibilities between prevention and operational pillars, but also moving some responsibilities to civilian contractors. Mm, this, was, this was the major challenge for, for the police because, as I said, the, the crime was growing during the reforms in the 90s were very painful economic reforms we have to remember this um, for a couple of years you know the the, the, the state was uh, in a really dire economic situation so there was no money for state institutions or it was very limited so, so generally generally mm, you you couldn't increase the number of, of people working for for the police you had to manage the very very limited resources in a very difficult situation yes. and 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 these were the major problem problems that actually limited the efficiency of, of the reforms the insufficient funding not enough policemen to deal with the rising crime a large proportion of of, of people behind the desks at the expense of those working on the streets a large proportion of policemen doing duties which could be taken by other services such as escort and, and guard duties and there was an unfortunate dissolution of the department uh, for combating economic crimes for example uh, within the police um, lack of the modern equipment police did not have basic tools such as automatic system of fingerprint recognition which was a standard in the western countries that at that time problems with well-trained leaders who would push their reforms at, at, at the lower levels unclear division of labor between police and new security services services it referred especially to to terrorism economic crimes narcotics corruption and the loss of informants in 1970 to 1990 some 40 to 50 percent of criminal cases were revealed thanks to the informants uh, and at the beginning of the 1990s this dropped to to 14 percent only 14 percent of cases were were solved uh, thanks to to the system of informants and in response to the rise of the organized crime Finally, the Central Bureau of Investigation was created as a special bureau within the, the, the police in 2000. It is a spe specially trained force within the structures of the police to investigate the, the most serious cases of organized crime. And although there are other security uh, services who deal with organized crime as well, uh, they do it uh, in addition to other duties, but this 
CBH, CBH um, is, is devoted especially to, to this purpose. It should be stressed that, that police was not involved in um, high profile politically motivated activities. Nevertheless, the, the relations between the police and political leadership are far from uh, ideal. Uh, and it begins at the very top level, political party which wins elections traditionally introduces a change of the chief commander of the police. What leads to changes at the lower levels of, um, of his deputies? And there is a tendency that before the elections, some high ranking police officers try to build political contacts, relations, and um, they, they try to, to be perceived as somehow affiliated to, to the party that is, that is likely to, to win because he hopes that he will stay or, or be promoted to the position. And what was uh, the problem uh, with the reform of the police? That there was no clear career path. Uh, since it is a hierarchical institution, mm, the rules of promotion should be clear and uh, measurable. But apparently it is still not the case. It is not clear why some policemen make brilliant careers while others who are not um, politically connected or, or who, who are very competent, but, um, but somehow they are, they are not, not promoted. So, uh, so this, this, is, um, this is one of the problems that we still experience in our police force. And politicians, especially ministers of the interior, they have the inclination to put the successes of the police on their account. They and try to push the chief commander to the background, which also does not help the, the police. They also use police as a tool of political fight. They often use it as an example of incompetence of, of the rivals who are unable to build a stable, a safe state. But these are comparing to, um, to other uh, security services. I will discuss in a while. And, and these are minor, uh, minor problems. Police managed to improve its image in the society. It, it has managed to improve its uh, effectiveness. And for the last decade, it has been positively perceived by the public opinion. Generally, more than 70% of the population has a as a positive assessment of the police. So this would be about the, 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 the reform of the, of the police. And um, if there are, I will, will take questions at the, at the very end, or would you prefer to ask questions as, as we go? Uh, we can do that at the end. Okay, all right. So now I will um, present you the challenges and significant huge challenges of the reform of the security services and one of the reasons why it was a huge challenge was the scope of the reforms poland had to undergo at the at the same time it decided to change its political and economic system so the reform was huge organizational challenge which obviously encountered significant political obstacles and during the communist era polish security services were divided into military intelligence and counterintelligence and the civilian part which consisted of different departments of ministry of interior responsible for uh, fighting the enemies of the state as i mentioned at the very beginning uh, church and the opposition uh, and uh, of course they were some parts were focused on the activities in poland others were focused on the activities abroad uh, there were two different departments responsible for the fight with the opposition and with the church and they formed the so-called security office and later security service służba bezpieczeństwa sbsb and because of the role of security services during communism, the reforms had a significant symbolic and political importance. And I will focus on the civilian part of the security service, but 
as I said, we'll try to maybe to refer to military intelligence. And the reforms were heavily influenced by the decision that Poland will move to the new political system in an evolutionary way, not through the revolutionary changes. So the transformation was based on the compromise agreed in 1989 during the so-called round table negotiations between the former regime and the opposition. And the supporters of the compromise usually were against disclosing the archives of the security services, especially the files with the names of, of secret collaborators of, of security services. And this created a, a real political minefield, the, the atmosphere of suspicion and the ground for intense political fighting during which some founded and unfounded accusations were, were formed. It, it obviously had to influence new security services which inherited some people and, and knowledge uh, of the past. This, this obviously gave also new security services a, a very powerful leverage. In April 1999, um, the, this uh, bill that I mentioned, um, approved by, by same by our parliament, opened the way to the reform of security sector. And the security service, which was used to fight opposition and the church was dissolved, and then the new Office for the State Prosecution, UOP, UOP, was created. It had to serve two roles of uh, civilian intelligence and civilian counterintelligence. As in communist Poland, it was subordinated to the Minister of Interior, which made it a really important post. At the same time, the legislators did not decide to introduce the mechanism of parliamentary control of the services. And to compensate for, for this lack of oversight, the political advisory committee was established by by the minister of interior and to to opinionate the, the projects of the bills on the reforms of security services so there were two two concepts of the of the reform the first one was the zero option to to disband all the old structures and to build the new ones from scratch with completely new people. But this seemed on, one, on the one hand to be a risky concept, which could weaken the security of the state for a significant period of, of time before new services become effective. Uh, but it was probably also unrealistic. Um, the, the, the new chief of the Agency of State Security, this UOP, uh, Krzysztof Kozłowski, a philosopher, by the way, uh, he said that there were just not enough people willing to, to work for the new security services, that it was impossible to, to build it on completely new, new people. Um, so another option was to build new service, but to keep some of the old employees. The former employees would be screened, vetted, some of them who were especially active in persecuting opposition, violating human rights, etc., would be removed. Some of them would remain and the new people would be hired. And it seems that for practical reasons, this option was, was chosen. But as I said, it created a, a serious political um, consequences. It is important to understand that the general political um, landscape uh, in Poland, very briefly, I will, I will put it in these terms, that there were three major groups of parties in Poland post-communist coalition of the left, left parties. Of course, they were not interested in a very deep reform, reform of security uh, services because um, a lot of them um, cooperated with the security services. So revealing all the archives would, not, uh, would be not politically beneficial. Uh, second, the liberal center-right made of former opposition who supported the reforms based on the compromise with the regime. So, um, so they were the, the, the right large part of, of this political spectrum was also uh, not, 
not willing to 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 introduce too deep reforms too fast because they were afraid that this compromise uh, will be broken and instead of you know focusing on the economic development of the state and joining the western security and economic structures there will be an intense political fight so they wanted to to keep this compromise and there was the third group that the, the conservative parties some of them right wing parties who advocated more radical reforms based on the zero option deep decommunization and revealing the names of the officials who were the informants of security services in the past and um, there were some 24000 people in the security apparatus at the beginning uh, of the 90s those above 55 years old were retired those who remained were a subject to screening uh, from the 14 thousand people who were vetted some 5500 were employed by the new service so so you can see that from 40 24000 on only 5500 of former employees of the former security services stayed in the new service uh, but what is important here and what is perceived as a major mistake that those former workers of communist services were placed at the positions of directors of departments and offices so even if there was a you know somebody could use the argument that uh, no, the, the small part was some 20 uh, 25 percent of them uh, stayed uh, in in the positions so they were concentrated on the on the crucial positions, on the positions that actually defined the, how the structures operated. And there were some new people employed, but very few, few of them, uh, some 40, 50 people at the very beginning. Um, so, so, so you have, um, so you have a, a, a good picture of, uh, of the structure of the new, uh, new force. Uh, it soon turned out that the reform was only a partial success, if, if I can put it this way. The first problem um, was caused by the fact that the new security services relied to some extent on communist, former communist agents. Uh, the verification of the cadres was not perfect. People who wanted to, to come clean on their past behavior wanted to prove their loyalty to um, and usefulness to new uh, political bosses and it took different forms but the most noticeable one was to bring some compromising information which could be used against political opponents and this contributed to the so-called file war uh, or war at the top in 1992 and 1993 when politicians were trying to damage the rivals with some compromising information received from security services and those conservative parties um, who wanted deep reforms they claimed that security services filled with communist agents and russian spies were used to divide and weaken conservatives especially so they were unable to to introduce radical reforms which could threaten the interests of, of post-communist elites it became an important political narrative and they claimed that former communist agents who stayed in the security services maintained significant influence on the structure of the new office its methods its goals and this accusation became an important uh, narrative that is still still um, used even today when there are no and no former communist agents in security services uh, anymore and um, but by using such narrative they they try to demonstrate that the new order is based on the rotten compromise between the former regime and the opposition that one cannot build free and independent poland on such structures and they advocated for the zero option and it just became a part of their political identity and there is actually a quite long list of high profile cases how security services were used for political gains one of the most notable 
however, was not against center uh, right or right uh, politicians um, who were in democratic opposition. On the contrary, in 1950, uh, 1995, uh, the prime minister, uh, Josef Oleksy from the Left Alliance, the post communist party, was accused of close contacts with the KGB resident in, in Poland. And actually, uh, he decided to give up his post. And after uh, the years of investigation, the judiciary uh, decided that uh, there are no proofs of, uh, of any wrongdoing. His career uh, was to a large extent over. So putting aside the narrative used for political purposes, it seemed that security services played their own games for their own interests, but they were uh, willing to, to use the compromising materials against uh, the politicians from, from different parties. The, the second major mistake, if I can put it this way, was lack of clear competences and, and lack of, of tasking. Uh, the first years of functioning of those Urząd Ochrony Państwa, the Office of uh, Protection of the State, they were pretty chaotic. People who should do operational jobs were engaged in technical organizational matters. They, the employees were asked to do some bizarre tasks. Uh, uh, one of the examples is when when UOP was used to remove the posters with the images of the president Lech Wałęsa and other politicians who were accused by, by political rivals of collaboration with communist security services. So of course, this was a major, major security institution that was responsible for constitutional order, but claiming that, you know, that putting posters by the opposition accusing the president or other politicians of collaboration that it could undermine the, the, the constitutional order. Well, it was a little bit too far, probably, and it did not contribute positively to the image of the security services from the very, from the very beginning. Um, and, and the problem is, uh, was also that they had no clear instructions what to do operationally. This is what a lot of employees uh, said that at the time of economic uh, liberalization, time of opportunities, but also serious economic crimes, it was not clear whether this new uh, security service should be responsible for combating serious economic crimes. Uh, at one hand, you know, in the police, as I said, uh, the office for economic crimes was abolished. On the other hand, um, it was not clear whether this new state security uh, service should deal with uh, economic crimes and, um, and there was a clear gap, a limbo that was exploited by, um, uh, by some um, crime organization. The third major problem was political democratic control over security services. It became clear that in a democratic state, special services has to be better supervised. In 1996, some amendments were introduced to the bill on the Office of State Protection. It was subordinated to the prime minister. Uh, so um, clearly, the politicians were afraid that, that, that the security service is uh, and not properly controlled, that it plays its own game. Games, so they they tried to fix it by by putting uh, it under the control of the prime minister. The position of minister coordinator was created, a special minister to supervise security services. And what is crucial. And this is a very important element in this whole structure in the, the political control of security services that are um, the, 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 the element of the political game that the parliamentary commission for security services uh, was established. Pa parliamentary uh, commission 
Um, and the, at the very beginning, I, just after the establishment of, of this parliamentary commission that was supposed to provide uh, parliamentary oversight of the security services, uh, a very interesting custom tradition uh, has started to, to develop uh, that um, the leadership of the commission was offered to the opposition party. It was rotational, so the, 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 you know, the representative of different opposition parties could preside, um, could take the, the, the leadership of this parliamentary commission. But uh, the, the governing, governing party, the governing coalition imposed some kind of self-restraint on itself to, to demonstrate that you know, th this is a special area of the state structure that really needs to be, to be controlled on some bipartisan um, uh, ways, systems, that there need to be some bipartisan agreement consensus how to how to use how to develop those those structures that there should be some element that is taken out of of political uh, political fight and this was um th there were very few cases i would say of, of this mat mature approach to to the state structures by the politicians but it was uh, it was definitely one of them and that it probably represented what we could say the democratic uh, democratic culture which uh, demonstrated that the poland is a part of of the west but the reform of the services was still very very much a political issue and there was quite a vocal debate on more serious reforms and when the center-right parties won the elections, uh, first time in 1997, they introduced the, the, the administrative reform of the state. Uh, it was a huge reform of territorial administration. Mm, and the state um, at that time was divided into smaller administrative parts, but it offered some additional benefits because uh, uh, it, uh, it it gave the opportunity to some further restructuring of the office of the prosecution um, where still some thousands of, of former um, communist agents worked so it was the opportunity uh, to to retire some more than 1000 around 1400 uh, security service employees mainly those who worked for for communists but the major reform was introduced when post-communist returned to power four years later in 2001. They argued that uh, this Office of State uh, Prosecution uh, Protection has not been effectively supervised, uh, that it existed as an entity completely independent from, from the rest of the state structures, and that during the governments of center-right coalition security were used for political purposes. And of course, the, the, the case um, that I gave you, the example of, uh, of using uh, some accusations against the prime minister, uh, the, the left-wing parties must have had a grudge against the services. Uh, so, so they, divide, uh, they decided um, to introduce quite important deep reforms. And uh, they actually uh, dissolved this, um, this office and replaced it with the Agency of Internal Security, Counterintelligence and Intelligence Agency, Intelligence. And the post of Minister Coordinator was abolished. Um, it was, uh, Collegium for the Security Services was also, also created. It consists of the Prime Minister, Minister of Interior, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Defense, Minister of Finance, uh, and Chief of Presidential National Security Bureau. So this is the institution that is supposed to, to 
to oversight to to provide um, an oversight to to the security services mm. this reform on the one hand strengthened political supervision but at the same time uh, it also strengthened the, the political influence on the services now now we had a number of ministers who who could influence the services prime minister received some new competences but there were no procedures which would enable verification uh, if his guidance is being is being has been implemented uh, there were additional problems with unclear division of competences among different services agency of internal security protects the constitutional order and protects the internal security and deals with the espionage terrorism protection of state secrets corruption of state officials crimes against the economic pillars of the state uh, or threats to the interest of strategic importance uh, in economic technology, cyber, illegal weapons, sale, uh, international trade uh, of narcotics. But at the same time, uh, police was also responsible for fighting terrorism, narcotics, cyber crimes. And there was no clear separation of, of responsibilities of, of those two services. Mm, and um, it was it was pretty uh, pretty significant problem and in 2005 conservatives who claimed that the secret service was used against them won the elections as i said and, um, and they introduced some further uh, reforms the most important one that i would like to to um, to stress is that they created a new uh, bureau new office the central anti-corruption bureau cba so again you could you could see how the politicians uh, try to respond to to the political needs to the to the broader political context that um, when they when they hear that that people when they see that people do not feel safe that they have a uh, a negative perception of uh, of the police or the judiciary and then this is a natural uh, consequence that they will try to use it for political gains on one hand then that they will try to introduce the reform but whether the reform fixes the 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 the, the, the former problems it's open for for a debate because there is a very a very tempting um, opportunity to introduce such changes that will help your your party stay in power that will help your party win uh, future uh, elections and um, so um, this was one of the political promises of conservatives um to to fight with the corruption and in 2006 the central anti-corruption bureau was established an organized organization whose aim was to fight broadly defined corruption in states institutions and corruption which could undermine economic interests of the state uh, it included the corruption bribery during the procurements which were sometimes used by politicians for personal gains and one of the most controversial operations happened already in 2007 when an agent of this new anti-corruption bureau clearly used unethical methods to seduce a female politician uh, of the opposition party uh, and manipulated her in such a way that she agreed to pass some money to bribe uh, another politician who who was uh, responsible for supervising the procurement procedure uh, and this was a high profile case which was made public um, just before the elections so of course at that time nobody knew what operational methods were used that these were unethical methods but the 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 the, the, the case of the corruption the message to the society that the new bureau and was effectively used to, to reveal the corruption of the opposition politician this message was sent just before before the elections to uh, to the society 
and of, of obviously you know the, the politician was later acquitted in the court of law um the conservatives uh, did not manage to win the elections but nevertheless it was a clear example that you can use uh, security services who should especially even even those who advocated that they, they be they, the, the, the services are a political that they are not used for political benefits are definitely tempted to to do it in 2015 when conservative coalition again won the elections this agency of internal security uh, had some 5500 posts of which only 300 were still occupied by former communist agents. And the second part of this uh, security services, intelligence agency, had some thousand people with less than 100 from, from previous era, less than 10%. Nevertheless, traditional goal of conservatives was to remove all the former communist agents from security services. And this has been probably achieved after after a couple of years since uh, 2015 uh, one thing that i will indicate that uh, that i am very critical of and i would like to stress is is that this rotational leadership of parliamentary commission for security services was removed so you can see that you know that the, the democracy new democracy after 30 years of reforms there was something new that started to appear, a new culture, a new democratic culture, a bipartisan control, parliamentary control of security services based on some informal agreement. And now, uh, now it has been um, removed. Now the governing coalition representative of the governing coalition presides of this parliamentary commission. I am, I am, I am very, very critical. Uh, of this um, and as i said the reform was a continuous effort with huge political implications sometimes it was uh, equally important to build effective services and to send signal to the large part of the society that that former regime do not enjoy benefits from uh, persecuting their own citizens in in the past uh, so there were some some different solutions introduced that uh, um, decision makers, politicians decided to lower the pensions of former agents and to, to, to cut off some, uh, some benefits. Um, in Poland, you know, in this uh, debate about the reform of political structures and uh, security services, it is sometimes claimed in Poland that Czech Republic has introduced the reform much faster and 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 deeper and, and that this should be this that this could be done actually and we just made a, a wrong choice uh, that we could choose a completely different different route um, and and uh, the, those uh, there are arguments that there was a zero option effectively used in in czechia and that uh, they also verified the employees of uh, effectively and verified the employees of security services and the major difference was that in internal security service uh, it employed former workers of security services who were removed from the posts after so-called Prague Spring in 1968 and that they were put at the top of the bureaus and offices and um, new people as a percentage of the whole force uh, also contained actually a very, very small fraction of the overall structure. Um, but in, in the part of security service responsible for intelligence, uh, some 80% of former agents were removed. So at least in, in, in this part of, uh, of Czech reform, we could say that it was close to, to zero option. Uh, which is used for uh, for supporting this argument in Poland that uh, that there was a mistake uh, done, but actually uh, actually uh, in other parts of the reforms, as as far as I know, it was pretty it was pretty similar. 
and very very briefly we have some uh, some 10 minutes uh, that i can devote to military and military intelligence we are talking about security uh, sector but to have a full picture of the reform uh, it would be good to to demonstrate that uh, this um, reform of, of, of military security structures was equally challenging challenging part of the reform and uh, the fact that military behaved responsibly during and uh, the reforms in the 1990s and despite some incidental cases when politicians tried to use it for political purposes or some ambitious political uh, some uh, politically ambitious generals uh, military demonstrated that it is read, ready to become uh, a political force and this is uh, um, absolutely fundamental a lot of people underestimated because it, it was crucial for for poland it was not a given that the reforms you know will go smoothly and that we will survive as a that we will develop into into a direction of a democratic state it was you know the the, the, the political situation was a very dynamic uh, it was not obvious whether we will join european union and nato um you know russia was uh, was weakened so it was unable to to influence very effectively what is going on uh, in in poland but uh, as i say uh, it could go either way we we could be a mature become a, a stable democratic state but we could also become a very unstable uh, country um, with corrupted political elites and uh, uh, and and not very not very efficient so uh, of course the the overall sense of the security that that the military at least uh, is behaving responsibly uh, that it offers um, if 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 there is the outside threat that it would offer um, a protection but it is not used for internal political games it was very 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 important but of course the tricky part was this uh, military security uh, services um, because we had this military intelligence and counterintelligence at the beginning of the 1990s it removed some 70 percent of former communist personnel and and changed its name to military information services but it was not under a proper democratic control and uh, it managed to survive thanks to the protection of the politicians especially um, the presidential center of power because uh, you know the our the president in polish political system uh, is the um, chief commander of uh, of the military uh, so uh, and 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 there is uh, of course the president is elected uh, in national uh, elections so he is a very um, politically a very 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 strong um, he has a very strong position and legitim legitimacy so obviously uh, he has a, a very big political ambitions and 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 there is when this new political system has been developing maturing uh, there has been a constant fight between the presidential center and the government and governmental center so on the one hand we could see the reforms of the civilian security services but on the other hand we could see that the president could be interested in in having under control uh, or or having good maintaining good relations with the military and maintaining good relations with military security services so actually this is what caused that uh, there were very dynamic changes in the in the security uh, uh, civilian security uh, sector part uh, but the military security services remained untouched to to 2000 to the years to to 2000 and it also it also caused some uh, political reverberations there were some accusations that military security 
uh, services also represented their own interests or interests even of some political uh, groups or even other states and were finally dissolved by conservatives in 2005 and they were replaced by two new services military intelligence and counterintelligence and they were um, put under and uh, at the beginning uh, until 2005 they were under the control of the uh, of their own control actually but in after this 2005 reform they were put under the control of the minister of uh, of defense um, so to sum up, uh, there was no planned coordinated reform of security sector in Poland. The individual elements of the whole security system were reformed independently, uh, but it was not a systemic reform. Rather, reforms were made under pressure uh of immediate short-term political calculations or were enforced by some bigger reforms such as administrative reform of 1997 for the first 15 years uh, changes affected mainly civilian part of security sector uh, within the civilian part of the security sector the reform of the police did not stir big controversies whereas reforms of security services, intelligence and counterintelligence were at the center of political fight. And uh, the services were used instrumentally by, by different uh, political parties from all um, political spectrums. The need for deep reform based on zero option became a part of political identity for conservatives who claimed that Poland has not regained full independence that uh, there are some outside influences uh, in those security services but it was also used instrumentally by all parties for short-term political purposes to to weaken uh, the opponents the, um, the need for for reforms and someone could say that we we analyze weaknesses of the security structures but it that not, does not necessarily tell us the whole story of their effectiveness and um, that's true they they may be quite effective we may see you know one or five percent uh, of what is going on um, what what reaches uh, this public realm dimension uh, but nevertheless we still do not have a uh, a political culture in Poland which could enable effective bipartisan control of security services. And I think that it is their, their biggest weakness as, as, a, as a part of, of democratic system. Another uh, problem that should be stressed in this uh, final summary is that the problems of overlapping competences have been um, finally partially uh, solved. To solve such problems, uh, it is sometimes necessary to adopt a new bill. And it, it, uh, I think that it shows nicely uh, that it can be done, that Poland, uh, Polish parliament approved in 2016 a bill on fighting terrorism, and in 2018 a bill on national cyber security system. And they, they, nicely, they nicely defined the competences of of different elements of security security sector so so sometimes instead of of trying to you know change all the all the um, all the bills uh, of all the institutions you do it by introducing the new deal that refers to to to, to changes uh, in uh, that refers to to the bills and it it defines the role of um, of the of, of of all those uh, security services in such a way that they become more effective than they they, they used to be. Um, so finally, the last sentence: that the reform did not create an independent security services which would be well placed 
in the constitutional order and could serve as a state, serve a state and its citizens. And it, it was still an institution under a political influence, and it is still an institution under a political influence. So it will take some time for Poland to develop this democratic, democratic culture that we have a bipartisan control over our, our military. Uh, the the re reassuring, the last sentence, and we will, I, I, I can take questions after this, that the reassuring part is probably the reform of the police, that uh, police um, has been on the top of all rankings of the state institutions with the highest public trust. Um, I don't know the, the recent public opinion polls. Uh, they are going to spend uh, quite a substantial money and decided to carry out a, a, a very uh, extensive public opinion poll. It is, uh, it is ongoing. The, the results have not been revealed yet, but, uh, but a year ago, it was still like 70% of people had a positive opinion of the police. And I will end here and I am ready to, to take your questions if, if there are any. Uh, thank you very much for the comprehensive presentation. And now I would like to ask uh, Artasha Schalatian to step in with some comments and suggestions maybe. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Gulturan, uh, a little uh, correction. I'm not the advisor to the prime minister, but the head of the secretary, uh, secretary to the public council, which is a consultative body to the government, the constitutional body. But it is a very like a pleasant uh, uh, like mistake because it would be honor for me to become in person advisor to the prime minister. Mm. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, informative uh, um, presentation. It was uh, uh, very interesting for me because uh, I am involved in uh, uh, writing policy papers for uh, security reform and I'm also delivering lecture to the new uh, petrol um, department of the police which is going to start the, obliga uh, the obligations uh, in July. Um, my uh, first question uh, is the following uh, whether the police in uh, Poland uh, has a competence to uh, conduct a preliminary investigation or they are only uh, in charge to like fix uh, the crime and to hand in all necessary um, documents to special investigative uh, bodies uh, in order uh, uh, they can um, conduct the pre preliminary investigation because in Armenia we um, have such a division uh, police is not competent to uh, personally conduct the preliminary investigation but only they are, are just uh, tracing mm -hmm. um, the crime uh, uh, and assist uh, the preliminary investigative bodies to uh, uh, conduct the preliminary investigation, but that they are not personally in charge to do it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And I would like to uh, understand uh, how uh, these uh, issues are resolved according to the Polish. Uh, okay. Yes, I understand. Uh, this is a, a pretty, pretty simple question. When, when the prosecutor, uh, prosecutor starts um, uh, the investigation, so actually uh, he gives uh, this investigation to to the police, and the police is responsible mm -hmm. for 
for the preliminary investigation it um, um, has to take the um, the accounts from from them from the witnesses uh, it, it needs to, mm -hmm. to gather to collect the, 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 the proofs and, and prepare and prepares the and prepares a certain uh, summary a protocol of, of uh, and and then after after this uh, preliminary investigation the prosecutor um, decides whether whether the case will be further uh, pursued in the court or whether it will be stopped at this at, at this stage uh, yes uh, uh, let me uh, briefly introduce what we have in mm -hmm. armenia the your experience was um, what you have we used uh, starting from uh, 1990s until like 2010 11 uh, starting from that point and i think also uh, a little bit influenced by the russian experience but in my opinion um, um, notwithstanding that uh, this experience was uh, transplanted from russia uh, we uh, take the power to investigate from police and uh, we created a special uh, body uh, like the uh, investigative committee and uh, the main part of uh, criminal cases are investigated by different divisions and department of the investigative committee mm -hmm. um, uh, like military cases all the cases uh, pertain formally pertaining to police and police uh, uh only uh, like um, uh, assist to uh, investigative committee in conducting preliminary investigation performs uh, operative intelligence uh, functions mm -hmm. um, but uh, the main function to investigate the crimes is put on the investigators of this investigative committee um, uh, together with a uh, prosecutor office who uh, like over uh, oversights uh, uh, controls uh, their actions and uh, mm -hmm. our uh, like uh, reform uh, is not just um, fulfilled uh, um, wholly uh, because uh, the uh, crimes of treason uh, espionage uh, are uh, again left uh, in the hands of the uh, security service, which I think that it, it makes uh, this reform incomplete because we have like investigative committee who deals with all the crime mm -hmm. and we have like uh, such a, a body or uh, we, uh, we gave preference to the state security service uh, 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 in terms of these two crimes and like this uh, body uh, in public opinion have some preference uh, and uh, have some uh, uh, powers which uh, according to the new uh, logic should be given also to the investigative committee and the same issue is in case of tax and uh, customs crimes, which uh, are dealt wholly by the state revenue committee. So we have an incomplete reform and we are working on a consultative document to present the government um, suggestion to uh, have uh, a complete reform because we just like, um, uh, have uh, this reform inherited by the former regime. And I think that after the Velvet Revolution, we ought to uh, complete this reform because uh, state security service, which um, also is a body which we inherited from the former communist regime and we have uh, not done any reform therein. Uh, we must uh, start from this issue and take also the 
uh, crimes of espionage and treason from state security service and to give it to the investigative uh, committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, the is, this, is, this, is, this is, you know, uh, what is interesting in this Polish um, case, in these structures that we developed, and uh, I would like to draw your attention to it, that, you know, that we, we created the special service in the police to deal with the most serious crimes, right? So mm -hmm. on one hand, it was the, the response to the needs uh, and, uh, and this perception of the public opinion that, that the police is not effectively doing uh, with, those, uh, with the organized crime. But at the same time, it was pretty clear that you need to have a certain specialized competences to deal with it, that not an average policeman uh, will will be able to do it. So so we have this uh, central bureau, śledcze, central bureau you know, of investigation that is really devoted to to this particular crime. And and of course they uh, they carry out the investigation. They 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 also act like an anti-terrorist, well-trained um, uh, force that that can 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 deal with the armed and dangerous uh, groups. Uh, but an, another element that is also interesting from this um, structural and political perspective uh, is this um, anti central anti-corruption bureau. So, uh, so again, you 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 take a certain a certain important element, especially that it needs to deal with the political corruption as well, right? So, so you you need to have a certain element that is able to control. Um, to, to, to provide the self-control for, for, for the state uh, that, that, that we are, the politicians are, you know, whether they are in the government or not in, not in the government, that you have the independent institution that, uh, that is able to, um, to, to, to check whether there is no, uh, no political corruption uh, or, or some other types of, of serious, serious corruption. So again, the very name indicates the central, central, the central anti-corruption bureau. It it indicates that it is, you know, supervised by by the prime minister. Uh, it is um, it is the part of uh, um, you know of those security uh, services, um, but it is a separate uh, service. So it, it is not the responsibility of intelligence and counterintelligence but a different important area of, of, of state activity that should be taken, taken care of. So, um, and to your knowledge, uh, we uh, recently have passed a law and we also have created a, a anti-corruption um, committee mm -hmm. which the like uh, competencies and we just take uh, the corruption crimes from, uh, uh, from, uh, the investigative committee and uh, gave uh, the powers to investigate these crimes to this committee and we also have created uh, uh, together in the same legislative package we have created also uh, anti-corruption courts which mm -hmm. are in charge of uh, just adjudicate the uh, adjudication of this um, uh, these uh, crimes um, and the logic uh, when uh, just taking uh, the powers to investigate crimes from police is also like to divide the competencies but because after the communist regime and uh, during the first decade or even more of uh, democratic uh, regime in uh, Armenia, uh, uh, the police uh, had uh, uh, quite uh, negative uh, uh, like image uh, mm -hmm. in public perception, like a uh, body uh, in Russian, it is the quite symptomatic uh, word, like uh, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, a body which fabricates um, uh, criminal cases and just um, uh, persecute innocent people. And to oversight this uh, process, so we just uh, gave the police only the power to just initiate a criminal proceeding and then to transform the case to the investigators and uh, the investigators like 
can quash uh, the uh, decision of po policemen to initiate this criminal proceeding if they find out that, uh, for example, there is no criminal uh, case in this issue uh, or uh, this person which is persecuted is, is an innocent one and uh, they um, even can uh, just um, uh, put forward uh, uh, an issue to uh, initiate a criminal proceeding against the policeman who just transcend their uh, um, legislative competences to persecute innocent uh, mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And we also have a special investigative uh, committee who is in charge of uh, uh, persecuting uh, statesmen, like uh, the state officials who transcend their uh, official competence. Uh, yeah, mm, yes. And uh, if we had not uh, such a, a post-communist uh, inheritance, uh, maybe uh, it, it was not a bad idea to uh, in, uh, like uh, have empower the police to investigate all these uh, crimes, but in our political and legal culture, police was associated to the political, Mm -hmm. uh, persecution, uh, like Similar, the point, yes. corruption, Similar. yes. Mm -hmm. And after the 2008, when the police was heavily involved in uh, uh, bloody uh, persecution of protesters who just uh, challenged uh, the uh, presidential elections of 2008, uh, the public perception of police like a political tool of uh, that they uh, regime was like deepened. And even this uh, regime, authoritarian regime understood that they must uh, uh, initiate uh, even restricted, but reforms to um, like uh, uh, reform of public perception of police, even uh, within the boundaries which they cannot transcend because they uh, they uh, in person used police as a, poli as a political tool. Mm -hmm. But uh, the uh, perception of police was so low, uh, the uh, image of the police in our society was so low that even the autocratic regime uh, found out that it is uh, uh, time to uh, uh, undergo even restricted reforms because uh, uh, people like uh, saw a crime uh, committed, but they did not want to cooperate with police. They uh, so like uh, even when they are caught as a witness, uh, they say that we do, didn't see anything. Uh, let uh, let us free, etc., uh, etc. Et so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now we are going to. Uh, a reform of police taking uh, as a basis the Eastern Europe uh, uh, experience as also Georgian experience. For mm -hmm. example, we are going to have um, a patrol police like in uh, US, uh, like in Georgia now, which is going to combine two functions, functions of traffic road police and also the functions of uh, operative intelligence uh, unit that they, uh, if they face a uh, crime, uh, they can uh, take immediate measures to um, catch the mm -hmm. uh, criminal and then to transfer it to the uh, the crime or criminal case uh, to the investigative uh, bodies. And also, so it going... could be a mixture of the road police and prevention, right? Uh... Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Interesting, because we, our, yeah, we have the separate road police, obviously, but uh, I think that they don't have this prevention. Uh, no, we have, uh, we have not the prevention now, and these uh, functions uh, will be transferred to them starting from July. And uh, we, uh, I just um, delivered lectures on constitutional law and human rights too the newcomers and uh, to the candidates to these posts. And uh, the, we have uh, have heavy uh, like um, 
educational program for them uh, lasting six, seven months uh, to just uh, uh, transfer to them necessary, not only theoretical and practical knowledge, but uh, also uh, some cultural aspects of uh, new style, new mm -hmm. style of policemen. And also we are going to have a Minister of Interior which will uh, combine uh, uh, police, uh, include police, migration service, um, border service, and also I think uh, the Department of uh, Emergency uh, Situations also will be included in this new uh, body. And the um, rationale behind it is that uh, to un uh, uh, perform civil um, control over the police and over the um, uh, over the uh, emergency uh, situations department, which is also a quite influential organ uh, equipped with some military capacities. Um, uh, the rationale is that the civil uh, control over it uh, would be uh, will be better if. A politician will be in charge of, politi of uh, political control over these military bodies. Though we will have a policeman, uh, the a head of the police, we will have a head of the, uh, this uh, organ of uh, emergency situations, but they all will be subordinate to their political master who will uh, in, uh, also accountable to the prime minister of uh, Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, Armenia, yeah, because uh, this is again uh, uh, just um, uh, endeavor to quash this post-communist uh, negative um, negative inheritance that we have, uh, like uh, independent center of power, mm -hmm. which are manipulated by uh, a ruling party. Uh, I don't know whether. Uh, we, uh, this is a best um, a best uh, solution because also if uh, you have a political master at the top of the hierarchy, there is again a, a risk that uh, these power uh, these organs uh, will be like uh, will have less power than previously, but they can again uh, maybe uh, by other. Um, uh, authorities can politically manipulate it, but mm -hmm. now uh, the governments, uh, because they know that they won't do it, uh, at least uh, during the uh, realm, uh, they uh, see this uh, a crucial reform to bring uh, the police and other uh, militarized bodies uh, under the uh, civil control. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so there is, you know, this this is uh, as I said, it's similar in Poland that the, you know, the politicians uh, finally decide um, about the position of the chief commander of the police, uh, is, and and uh, this this creates different different problems. Uh, difficult to say, uh, you know, how how big they what are. What's the best solution? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am. I know that there have been in the debate uh, some voices that you know the term of the commander should probably be just like independent of the political cycle, right? You can write probably yes. in the bill that it is a four-year term, and it you know. But but how to organize it? Because sometimes you have. We have such a the term fixed. Uh, yes, uh, in terms of uh, the. Head, uh, head of the staff of the uh, Ministry of uh, Defense, like uh, uh, a head of the like uh, central headquarters of mm -hmm. the military forces. Yes, so the, the term is five years. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, I agree with you. It it can be a good solution. But now we have an incomplete reform because this term only is fixed for constitutionally fixed for this statesman uh, but not for others uh, but uh, we also see it as a uh, additional guarantee 
uh, to preclude uh, the military uh, statesmen from subordination to the uh, political uh, group in power at uh, that time. Uh, but, uh, do you have uh, such a term for all, or like uh, such um, statesmen like police, uh, military, or or no? Like a fixed term of uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, no, only only for only in military, but in the in the police there is. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not 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 a fixed term. It, uh, you know, it can be uh, the commander can be changed by by the new political party, and it is uh, it creates a problem. Yes, because you know uh, we uh, had an experience that, for example, we had a, a head of the police which uh, whose tenure was ten years because this political group. Uh, just oh, held the power, for example, 10 years. Then another political group from the same claim uh, came to power. They changed the um, uh, head of the police, for example, which served like seven years. And we had this um, problem that these um, uh, key uh, state uh, officials uh, held, in, uh, held the power uh, equally with the, their political masters. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we had this problem and um, this um, informal uh, sense of unity, uh, sense of faithfulness uh, created like a circle of uh, uh, a circle of uh, like uh, like to a criminal organization, which everybody, nobody changed is changed. Everybody ha had has had some involvement in previous crimes. Nobody can break this circle because all of them are involved in heavy um, uh, state uh, uh, level uh, crimes. And this all this uh, picture uh, was in force uh, before the Velvet Revolution in Armenia in tw twenty eighteen. And now we have. Uh, a very um, difficult situation. How to just uh, disband uh, disband all this, mm -hmm. uh, all these formal and informal groups and uh, formal and informal ties. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you know, I this is what I tried to this is what I tried to to show you that you know in Poland yes. it, it took more than twenty years. Uh, for almost three decades actually to do it and yes. uh, now with this benefit of hindsight you would probably say that maybe it was even worth paying this this cost of of, of having a, a state completely reformed and uh, unable to 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 deal with different problems with um, in two or three, three years, but to introduce this zero option, because when you see how politically, um, you know, important element of, of the internal political debate and political tensions that finally led to the situation that we have a country which is divided in, in two. I know that the polarization, political polarization is, is taking place everywhere and in the United States, in, in many Western countries. But in Poland, this uh, uh, um, these completely two different uh, visions of, of of the reform of the state they they contributed to to, to a very very difficult division, which is uh, very difficult to to reconcile. It it definitely goes deeper than than a traditional political fight. You know, the people start to hate them, each other and then themselves. Yes, 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 yes. It's not just the uh, question that you have a different opinions and, and, and uh, ideas and we can discuss about it. This is just like, you know, almost a war. It's not a civil war, of course, don't, 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 let's not exaggerate, but, uh, but there is very, to room for 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 compromise on on anything yes because uh, in a post communist era uh, the previous uh, communist state of uh, former Warsaw Pact 
uh, there, there was a danger of polarization in terms of uh, basic principles of new statehood because uh, each political group which is going to come to power, they want to eliminate the other group and also to uh, recreate the state system to change it, uh, uh, take taking into account uh, former uh, former rules uh, which were uh, in action during the uh, power in communist era. So uh, we had a the, such a difficult situation that, uh, for example, now also we have such a situation that political opposition, which is going uh, to challenge um, the uh, ruling um, uh, political uh, forces um, uh, staying into power uh, in June, uh, when we have an extraordinary, uh, uh, no, um, like new parliamentary elections, um, they uh, they even uh, propagating like elimination of uh, democratic freedoms, like to establish an autocracy. So we have such a um, difficult situation that if they succeed, but I, I really know that they won't succeed because uh, they have no uh, public support, uh, but. Uh, this is a very dangerous situation when political opposition uh, challenging not uh, the ruling party, but also the democratic order of the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, this uh, makes the polarization very, very deep, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not in terms of persons, but in terms of values, mm -hmm. in terms Absolutely. of culture. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. And this is, I mean, and, then you and, and and this is absolutely crucial factor that that i i think uh, is missing in a lot of uh, analysis of security sector reform that if you don't understand this broader political context yes uh, what reality it needs to be uh, introduced uh, then very often you are unable to to offer uh, practical recommendations and and, and solutions yes. the recommendations and solutions they they need to be based first of all on on the po political legal system but at the same time it, it needs to 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 take under account the, the overall political context you will just not turn the hand of, of of the opposition and will introduce the reform because when the opposition comes back to power it will they, they will throw it to the dustbin and, and, yes, and they yes, yes, yes. its own reform so it, it needs to be consulted it needs to be in crucial areas based on uh, on the bipartisan uh, agreement and, and consensus. Yes, and the power, uh, the value of the power uh, just uh, must be restricted. For example, the political group we, who is in power should know that if they will be uh, disempowered, they won't uh, lose uh, their chance to come to power after another elections. Uh, but for this, they must. Be, it must be a democratic consolidation, like the opposition and the ruling party must be, uh, must have some uh, common understanding of the order of the state, uh, its uh, like uh, uh, future, and not to challenge the basis of state, but mm -hmm. only uh, to compete uh, for, in, prog uh, in in sense of programs, in sense of visions, but not uh, like. Uh, as Hitler did, yes, coming mm -hmm. to power and like, quash all the constitutional order and creating the new one, mm -hmm. like autocratic one. And mm, now we are uh, in a very crucial point to reestablish, uh, reaffirm our democratic commitments uh, and to have a political field, uh, where a political system where we will have uh, political parties with common values, but different programs. Okay. Mm -hmm. To just uh, achieve okay. these uh, mm -hmm. uh, values. So, thank you uh, again. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your uh, informative uh, presentation. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the discussion. It's it's very for me also very very interesting and. Um...
and fingers crossed when you know that the, 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 the our Polish experience is that you definitely if you have the opportunity to to have a, a planned reform um, maybe there is a chance that uh, it will be a successful a successful within a decade or something like this it will not uh, take three uh, decades thank you and to your knowledge we uh, also consider Polish experience uh, uh, closely uh, as a, a state which tried to just uh, tear all the ties with uh, the autocratic past uh, and we try uh, to take all the best experience that you had for uh, our, uh, furthering our uh, uh, democratic reforms. Mm -hmm. So, uh, thank you very much uh, for the interesting presentation and the fruitful discussion. I, I'm sure we will use some outcomes of today's discussion in the coming policy paper. So, thank you again for being with us and thank I you, wish you a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.